Well, I suppose today is as good a day as any day to integrate your soul, so let's do it. Let's watch a single YouTube video and learn how to integrate the highest, most personal or transpersonal element of your being into an integrated form of coherent structure which guides your everyday life beyond that sense of egoic monkey mind or status-seeking, pleasure-seeking, past-avoiding insanity that we call everyday life. I think we can do it. I think despite what you've read out there about the difficulty of incarnation and the difficulty of achieving spiritual enlightenment, we can actually do it in just one single video. Specifically, this video with Roberto Asayagoli, a prominent psychologist who I can't wait to tell you about. These are three of his books. This is arguably his most famous book, Psychosynthesis. This is The Act of Will, which has a wonderful diagram on the cover, but today we're ignoring both of these books and focusing on his most approachable and practical writing, Transpersonal Development, the dimension beyond psychosynthesis. So we're going in straight at the deep end. We're not just going to look at the transpersonal theory of pre-personal collective unconscious and post-personal collective unconscious, as well as the weaving of the two in terms of a soul or a spirit or an essence. Today we're going to integrate our soul in a very practical manner with the two-stage process of purification and revelation. Obviously they are not single chunk-by-chunk uh, chunk unlocks where you have a purification stage and then a revelation stage. It's actually the interweaving of the two threads together where you'll have a bit of purification and then some revelation, a bit of revelation, and then a purification urge to cut something away. This is the thrust of what we're going to try and do in this video, and if you couldn't tell, I'm obviously joking that you're not going to be able to integrate your soul by just watching a YouTube video. In fact, I want to give you a bit of a curveball. I want to give you a grounded spiritual perspective, which hopefully you've heard before, but maybe, and unfortunately, you may not have heard too often. It comes from the very end of this book, Transpersonal Development by Roberto Asayagoli, who again is a key figure in the transpersonal psychology movement, which essentially aims to honour the spiritual or otherworldly essence of our being beyond the, the developmental psychology elements that mainstream psychology tends to overemphasize. End of this book, powerful quote, may upset you, but I think it's, uh, <laughs> it's very accurate, especially if you want to integrate your soul. Page 266. The first step in gaining a healthy control over supernormal powers and eliminating the inherent dangers is to gain control over the normal functions within us. Again, one more time. The first step in gaining healthy control over supernormal powers and eliminating the inherent dangers of those supernormal powers is by gaining control of the everyday faculties. How boring, right? But it makes so much sense. You can't possibly expect to harness and truly vitalize a highly charged substance like soulful insight or spiritual revelation if you don't properly know how to look after yourself. You can't properly integrate something which is beyond the ego if you've yet to form a stable enough ego to hold that inpouring. Because what is the spiritual journey? Well, actually, I've got another quote from earlier in the book where Asai Goli gives you a bit of a taste for his personal, delightful, soulful essence. He says, The personal spiritual journey is a long and arduous adventure a quest through strange lands full of wonders, but also beset with difficulty and danger. It involves deep purification and transformation, the awakening of a number of formerly dormant abilities, the raising of consciousness to levels it has never before reached, and its expansion within a new internal dimension. The reason I bring that quote out for you, and the reason I want to focus on that dichotomy between the two quotes together, or the juxtaposition of those two quotes, is that Asai Goli is someone who is 
deeply esoteric and also deeply practical. You'll see these books kind of hinted at over here. These are actually Alice Bailey's Theosophy books from the 1940s and 1950s, which I'm going to look at later in the series, and I'd say that they are arguably some of the highest quality hidden magic or hidden occult books out there for people who are interested in white magic, which is the world-helping, world-supporting form of otherworldly, extrasensory, supernormal powers that Asai Goli talks about. And how do I say this with confidence? Well, Asai Goli, this very happy man, was direct friends with Alice Bailey in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. She was the leading figure in the Theosophy movement in the UK. And this guy was studying, meditating, corresponding directly with someone who was a very powerful spiritual teacher. And this is to say nothing of his personal psychological and professional studies. He, he really walked that realm between traditional developmental psychology and that higher level transpersonal theory which he helped to found, which is why we should listen to him. When it comes to integrating the soul, Asaya Goli became a living testament to the energies which he tried to bring forwards. It comes again to that double-folded path of purification and revelation, and I'm going to go ahead and make an assumption that you're familiar with both. You've likely had a powerful dream, multiple powerful dreams, powerful meditation experience, a spiritual emergence or spiritual emergency that's already given you a sense of revelation. You've already contacted something like your soul's voice, and you've identified that based on that sense of non-egoic narrative. Sometimes it's sensation, sometimes it's words which are very directive but very compassionate. It might be a phrase as simple as, you are here to do this, you need to do this, or even more softer, consider this person, consider this relationship, consider that book, or consider this profession. And it keeps coming back to you again and again. It's a, not a biblical sense of divine cloud-opening revelation, it's that quiet sense of self-recognition. It's that sense of the soul breaking through or emerging through or being received if you want to take the esoteric theory that we are a soul that has a human body and we exist within the field of the soul. Yes, there are different theories about etheric cords being attached here in the thymus and that being the silver cord of astral travel. All wonderful theories, some people would even say that they clairvoyantly confirm these things, but in the everyday sense of revelation that you've probably made contact with, you actually don't need very much of it at all. You really don't. It's like being given a full toolkit or a full instruction manual, and one day, for whatever reason, near-death experience, traumatic experience, childhood traumatic experience, a great meditation, a great sexual experience, gets handed to you. Suddenly, there you go. Suddenly, you've got the thing. What do you do with it? Well, it goes back to the previous edge of that dichotomy, which is purification. How do you do what Asaya Goli suggested and harness that supernormal power unless you've harnessed your normal powers? This is why I focus so much on trauma work. I wish I could stand in front of you and eloquently describe the theories of psychosynthesis and the different levels of personal and collective unconscious in a way which would be useful for you as a more important avenue than actually the everyday purification which requires an emptying. It requires a burning away. It requires a smoldering of the sludge, to put it poetically. This is very much learning how to be a healthy ego. It's to be someone who relates to themselves and to other people in as much of a self-loving way as possible. By my definition, my personal definition of self-love, it's that dual thread of compassion and respect. Compassion is the unconditional, more feminine element. Respect is the more action-based conditional element. They both weave together to create self-love. If you want to integrate your soul, if you want to integrate a higher level of personal agency which transcends a single life if you believe in karmic incarnational theories. You better learn how to be in this life, in this ego, in this body, and treat it with as much compassion and respect as possible. Because I don't think it's possible to be able to be smoking and drinking every day, or have 
toxic, harmful relationships with family, friends, loved ones, or the world at large, and think that you're possibly even approaching the door that leads into the corridor that eventually leads to the chamber of the soul, metaphorically speaking, and not think that you're going to get distracted or weighed down or burdened in some kind of dense way along that way. It's why classically things like veganism and sobriety are so highly regarded on the spiritual path. I don't think they're 100% necessary. There are many ways to get towards that super normal sense. But you can definitely believe that you're not going to be able to grasp or receive or even hold that sense of soulful, awake revelation unless you act upon that information that you've already received, you've already acted to some degree by this level of, um, you know, soulful guidance by being here in this form, if we want to go down the metaphysical route, you've already chosen some kind of soul contract or some reason to exist, some reason to concretize in material form. If you've got revelation that's already come through in the form of you're meant to write this book, you're meant to teach in this way, you're meant to maybe help in a more esoteric sense with energy work or something more empathetic and intuitive. If you've already got that, you don't need more. It's the purification stage. It's what Asai Goli is talking about when he's trying to introduce the concept of the spiritual journey being not only a process, but a series of actions and transformations and the awakening of what he said as the dormant abilities, those dormant capacities within ourselves. It's not something magical every time. It's not something otherworldly to the core where your eyes flicker with mystical insight and you feel your heart burst open with the love of God and humanity. It's how do you wake up in the morning and feed yourself? Do you choose to exercise your body in a way where it feels vitalizing and self-caring? Do you smile at people that you meet? It's that very classic, almost Christian sense of everyday relationships. And of course, the relationship that we have with ourself. It's the testing ground. It's almost like we get an opportunity to trial out how we're going to interface with ourselves and other people for when that moment comes where we start interfacing with the soul. And eventually, that separation, that dualistic split stops being so dramatic. We realize that we are a soul and then we pendulum back towards an ego identity and then we pendulum back towards a soulful identity and the journey itself, in a nutshell, is reducing that distance, but reducing the distance from revelation pouring downwards and purification working upwards, working from the ground up, working from that burning place, working from that place of detachment and release. Not bringing more in, sure, it's really useful, and I highly, highly recommend that you read books like Transpersonal Development or Psychosynthesis, in the addition to Act of Will, that touches developmentally at the very threshold of spiritual awakening and spiritual intuitive enlightenment, because we're at that higher level of cognitive capacity, we're turning our brain, or we're coupling our intellect with a sense of spiritual emergence. But if that's all you're doing, if you're primarily operating in this band and you're not engaging your heart and engaging your gut with everyday self-compassionate, self-respectful action, you're not going to integrate anything beyond more ego identity. You might get a spiritual ego. You might spiritually bypass towards a sense of inflated high theory of metaphysical truth and insight. You may read books like Alice Bailey's Theosophy books and think that you're integrating divine wisdom or that you're raising your vibration, if we want to use that very cliche New Age language. And you are to some degree, but it's incremental gains compared to the purification process of everyday reality, coupled with revelation which pours down as a guiding action, as a process, over the course of your lifetime. In a single sentence or two, the integration of the soul is about acting upon the revelation in a way that honors self and other through appropriate service. The appropriate service of your being as ego and soul, as flesh and spirit within this form, on the daily sense, the weekly sense, the monthly sense, and the decades which pass, as a lesson, 
as an opportunity to enter into that arena of service that, if you're still watching this video, I know tickles your fancy at least a little bit. You would not be listening to me at this point if you weren't switched on by that idea of doing something. Actually doing, yes, from a place of being and guided alignment, but doing something with your soulful energy. Doing something with the information that you've received. And I think more, more forcibly, acknowledging that it becomes a moral responsibility if you have received a certain degree of revelation to act upon that to the best degree possible. And in almost every single case, any revelation that comes through does ultimately boil down to how well can you love yourself and love other people. I've mentioned that point at least 10 different ways in this video. How well can you love yourself and love other people? It's really that simple. And yet it's incredibly complex and there are wonderful, wonderful books and theories of consciousness that you can turn to like Roberto Asai Gurley's Transpersonal Theories or the next video in this series where we're going to be looking at Ken Wilber who's arguably the OG king of consciousness with his integral theory and transpersonal theory. We're going to look at an even more wonderfully structurally potent theory of consciousness and how you can apply that at that higher egoic band on the threshold of revelation to develop in a multi-level holistic way. Next video in Inner Work Essentials, I'll see you over there, but for now, please love yourself and treat yourself well and do the same to other people. It's really the path of integration. It's quite simple.